somebody talking about a base, I guess from a historical point of view, I'd be interested to see whether this happened before countries went off the gold standard. Uh, yes, the, yes, it did. Um, and in fact, Dwayne Winsett um, presented a paper on, on the history. It was the 1873 crisis um, at the IMCR conference in Braga just this year. And he actually put it in the context of, of the Minsky model. Um, so so the, the, the answer is yes, it, it, it was happening before the gold standard. Same reasons or different reasons? He argued, he argued something certainly analogous to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and again, the, the, the problem being, I mean, Minsky's, what Minsky does is he recognises that, that there are these cycles of over-expansions of credit followed by panic and sudden implosions of fictitious value. He doesn't call it fictitious value, it's what he means. What he doesn't explain is the communication processes in those cycles, and that, that's what I hope I've kind of added mm -hmm. into the mix. Mm -hmm. Um, and by doing it, you can update Marx and, and link it to the arguments he made about contradictions. So, so, I mean, the communication systems were different, but the process of extensions of credit, people borrowing to, uh, to invest, because it's such a surefire deal, nothing could possibly go wrong. I mean, this, this, this is behind this, you know, the South Seas bubble was this. They were actually borrowing to buy their own stocks to keep the price going, and it became a Ponzi scheme, which is a big part of Minsky's framework. You know, but by Pont, I mean, we probably heard of, was it Madoff? Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff. Madoff, Madoff, yep. yeah. I mean, he was running a Ponzi scheme on a small scale. Well, what he might have added in his defence is that he was just the bubble on a much bigger Ponzi scheme called the financial markets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite a frightening picture that you yeah. have. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, I mean, seriously, in Britain, I mean, I was talking to academics that the universities have just been told that they're going to have the budgets cut by 25% and the caps on fees are going to be lifted. And that is a direct result of this stuff. You know, so this is an abstraction. I mean, this, this is really looking at really what I consider to be really quite tangible political economic realities. You know, the 25%, I mean, you imagine if someone cut Unitex budget by 25%. I mean, several of us wouldn't have jobs. Um, you know, the students had either come out with mortgage-sized debts or, or they wouldn't come at all. And they're doing that to Britain. You know, and, and you think, well, gee, you know, that's... You know, <laughs> I mean, if anyone feels like slagging off Michael Cullen, you might just pause and <laughs> thank, thank God he didn't take us in, in, into the position Britain was in, although it had more to do with the banks than, than, than policy. Sorry. I'm, I'm interested just... in the view of the future that you'd see here from this. Is it a rolling snowball that we situation that we're in, or more a cyclic situation? But what's happening to the cycles if you sort of try yeah. and look ahead from this um, scenario? It, it's. Just put it. The way I would understand it is it, it, is that, it, that you, the, these things are discrete in one sense. I mean the the. the Subprime mortgage crisis is pretty much gone. The credit crunch is pretty much gone. We're still feeling the after effects. You know, the, the, ne the next problem that we'll have isn't the one we regulate for. It's the one that we don't expect. It's always what catches you off, off, offside. You know, it, it, it's not the problem that you fix that will cause the next problem. Yeah. You know, in fact, but the problem is that by actually fixing the problem that you see today, you often set up the conditions through which someone will come up with a brilliant financial innovation to try and get round those regulations, and that will become very profitable, and people will think that's the next big thing, and that's usually where that's usually where the next problem stems from. I mean, CDOs were the classic example: collateralized debt obligations and mortgage securities. Um, in fact, did anyone see uh, for the love of money last night? BBC doc on the documentary channel dealt with Lehman Brothers, and he talked about this. Um, about that they were just making so much damn money out of these things. You know, people just assumed they couldn't be risky. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just thinking Minsky, Minsky, Minsky all the way through. We have the DVD if anybody wants to see it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Peter. I finally understood what it is that you were doing all these years. And it's yeah, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> because it does, as you say, have such direct implication on our, on our lives okay. everywhere. So as, as we said, we are recording these presentations and will go up on YouTube at some really? point, but they will be available so we can share it with the outside world. And the world should know what Miss has said. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.